Hello, Peter. Hi, Sue. <laughs> thanks for coming to Green Biz Verge, and thanks for taking the time to speak with Innovating Smart. Tell us, Peter, your full name, and tell us the um, uh, sustainability-driven innovative thing that you're involved with. My full name is Peter Ladner, and uh, I'm here at the conference as a columnist for Business of Vancouver newspaper, but I also am on the board of a nonprofit called the Natural Step Canada. Ah. And, um, but I'm also uh, talking to you because I've written a book called The Urban Food Revolution, Changing the Way We Feed Cities. And uh, it's been out for about a year, and I spent a lot of time researching innovations in local food production and people taking control of the food that they eat all over North America. Say more about taking control of the food that they eat. Well, as you may know, there's a lot of concern now about where our food's coming from, how it's being made, the poisons that are in it, uh, how secure our supplies of food are, the impact of rising fuel costs and the cost of food. And there's a huge anxiety in the land about where our food's coming from and the quality of the food and the impact on our health and the diseases that we're getting because of the food that we eat and the way we eat it. And uh, as a result, people are taking food into their own hands, literally, and changing the way they buy, eat, grow food. And there's an explosion of interest in people growing their own food, sourcing food locally, uh, finding out more about where their food came from, and trying to improve their health and their strengthen their communities and make a lot of other improvements in cities and in the world through eating better. Now, how are people organizing around this? In many, many ways. Everybody is a, makes choices about food every day. You vote with your fork. Mm -hmm. So you, we are all involved in food, in the politics of food. And uh, what the people are doing is becoming aware of the food that they're eating and changing the food that they eat. So they're doing everything from becoming vegetarians to sourcing food locally. They buy at farmer's markets. They buy directly from a farmer to uh, buying a box of food that's delivered regularly to their, once a week to their home. Or they're, uh, they're just uh, in, in cities, we're changing regulations where people can now sell food out of their backyards. They're putting restaurants or putting uh, greenhouses on their roofs and Commercial enterprises are starting up with growing food in cities on rooftops. And there's just a wealth of things going on. People are using it as an economic development tool. Um, and I was just fascinated with it. I have a background in civic politics. I was a mm. city councillor in Vancouver mm -hmm. for a couple of terms. And there aren't very many other issues where people who get food, when you get food right, all sorts of other things happen that are very positive. You build communities, you make communities safer, you make people eat better, they're healthier, they get to know their neighbors. How do communities become safer through food? If people are out growing food in boulevards, in community gardens, in their backyards, there are eyes and ears in the street, and that is a big <coughs> way to reduce crime. Okay, so it's really about inhabiting the outdoor spaces is, is, a, is a piece of it. That's part of it, and the other part of it is finding people who are on the margins of society and bring, getting them involved in growing food, which is something that's not too hard to do, <laughs> and uh, you can do it as a part-time job, you can do the very simple part of just shoveling, or actually the more complicated part of pruning, or whatever. It's very useful work, you can see the, literally the fruits of your labor, it's very rewarding, and uh, so in And many it's ways, a demonstration to anyone who witnesses it that the, there are people here who are caring and attending to this place. They're looking after their neighborhood, they're making it more beautiful, the neighbors come and talk to them, so that's another way. I first was introduced to community um, gardens by a, a police officer in Vancouver who huh. wanted to start one because she wanted to engage the homeless people in the neighborhood in something productive, uh -huh. and it worked. <clears throat> and, and how did she, um, go from that idea to, to creating a system, like, like uh, how did she organize? Well, uh, without getting into too much detail about that particular one, there are many, many ways that um, communities and, and societies and neighborhoods organize community gardens. I have a chapter in my book about the whole thing and all the ways to do it. <clears throat> and, but you'll find that cities uh, 
all over North America, all over the world actually, are encouraging this. They're making land available. Mm -hmm. They've got staff who will help you set one of these things up. They're waiving the water fees. They're helping deliver compost because they know it's a benefit to the community. Excellent. Now, um, is it okay if I show a picture oh, of your sure. book? That's fine. So, The Urban Food Revolution, Changing the Way We Feed Cities by Peter Ladner. I'm, I can't wait to get my copy, Peter. Um, one last question for you. So do you have any other advice on how to, um, um, and any, other, any other additional words that you'd like to add to that? Uh, just that uh, I think anybody who is involved in planning cities or mm -hmm. involved in politics at any level or involved in business, in any part of the food business, should be aware that this is a huge thing that's happening. And I don't think we're going to go back. I think this is going to keep growing and we're going to see more and more uh, food grown in unconventional places and more and more people saying, I want to know where this food is from before I eat it and more and more people changing their eating habits and realizing these benefits and doing even more of this. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Peter, for taking the time to talk with us today. My pleasure, Sue.